ask an attorney about Florida law. Ask an attorney, just give him a call. This is Ask an Attorney, all about ask Florida an law attorney. with attorney Joe Pippen. If you have a legal question, call Joe right now in Tampa. Call 813-287-5700. Anywhere else, toll free at 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. The law office is open. And now your host, Joe Pippen. Good morning. Welcome to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. I'm Attorney Joe Pippen. Ask an Attorney. If you have a legal question, all you have to do is to dial a number we're going to give you. That's 877-943-9673. And the law office is open. So if you have a legal question, uh, it can be about wills, trust, power of attorneys, health care surrogates, living wills. can be just about any area of law. And be more than glad to help you. And, and Merry Christmas. Just a couple of days away from Christmas and glad to be here. You might have a legal issue, though, of some types that you're concerned about and worried about, like a little peace of mind. I'm here to help you in any way I possibly can. All you need to do is to uh, dial the number. It can be about anything. Wills, trust, probate, guardianship, power attorneys, health care surrogates. can be... Uh, family law can be a lot of stress going on with families during Christmas sometimes, and sometimes family law issues come up. Could be about real estate transactions, could be personal injury. You've in, been injured somewhere and want to know what your rights are. If you have a legal question, again, I'm Attorney Joe Pippen. Ask an attorney all about Florida law. All you have to do is to dial our toll free number, which is 877 943 9673. That's 877 943 9673. Phone lines are open. A lot of uh, questions this week came in. A couple of families came in. Unfortunately, had lost someone. Someone had died. And the will is gone. Couldn't find the will. They could find everything but the will. And unfortunately, there were some probate assets. So what we have to do then is go through a little more complicated, lengthy, and costly procedure called uh, Procedure for a Lost Will. And it's just sad when families can find all of the papers but the one they need. And unfortunately, that's what happens sometimes. So maybe one of your New Year's resolutions is to get organized, get all your papers in the same place, tell family members where papers are and how they can be located. If uh, originals are kept in a safe deposit box, hey, you need to have someone to have access to that box. You need an authorized signatory on the box. And sometimes we have to do a petition to open a safe deposit box uh, through the court system to be able to even access the the, um, the box. So, But if you have a legal question, we're here to answer legal questions. The whole format of the show is to answer your legal questions. All you have to do is to call a number to get on air, um, uh, on air here with your question. Your question could help other people as well. So the toll-free number is 877-943-943. 9673 that's 877-943-9673 and phone lines are open and we are here again to help as many people as we uh, possibly can now a lot of times uh, people have estate plans and they're from other states they're old plans they uh, maybe you did them when your children were minors maybe you did them when uh, before you had children Maybe you've had a child pass away. Maybe you've had a child, maybe you have grandchildren. Maybe there's an in-law situation where you want to really protect your monies to make sure an in-law doesn't receive it. There are lots of reasons that people have to change estate plans. And we really recommend a review every three or four years to, uh, to get things in order, get things lined up, make sure that your wishes are all being taken care of. And... Uh, power of attorneys and living wills and health care surrogates and things like that uh, are definitely need to be changed. Let's go to our first caller, Laurie, who's calling. Hey, Laurie. Hello. Good morning. and uh, Happy holidays to you. Same to you. Where are you calling from? Sun City. Sun City, okay. Um, I'd like to know, I have 
uh, my builder is reimbursing me for damage to my property, and it's a few thousand dollars. But uh, I was told he told me that I have to sign for a 1099 form, mm -hmm. or, or if I have the work done next year, I would have to show the bills for it. Now my accountant said that he's reimbursing me for damage, so why would I have to fill out a 1099 saying I that's income coming to me? Yeah, I would agree with your CPA there. It's not income, and I don't know why he would require that. Have you asked him why he would require that? You can tell him it's just a reimbursement for damages. It's not considered income? If you, if you Not can. yet. I wanted to check it all out if I'm saying the right thing or not. Yeah, no, well, I would hesitate on that because if he reports his income and then you don't, then you're going to be report. You're going to be answering to the IRS. That's why you didn't report it. So he oh. he should be able to write it off. I mean, he should be re be able to reduce his <clears throat> income right. okay. because it's a reimbursement. And is it necessary that I have to show him paid bills? I, I assume that he's reimbursing me for damage in. Uh, it's well, I think he I... would have a right to see what he's reimbursing you for and what you've paid for. Yeah, so I think it'd be, you know, nothing wrong with you showing him invoices you paid. Okay. Um, but the 1099 is not really necessary for me to fill out. I don't think so. Your CPA doesn't think so. So I'd certainly yeah. ask him the reason why he needs it. Maybe his CPA can call your CPA if, yeah, if there's I... some question. Okay, very good. I appreciate that very right. much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Bye-bye. You're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. I'm Attorney Joe Pippen. If you have a legal question, all you have to do is to call our toll-free number, which is 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. You're listening to uh, multiple stations all over the state of Florida. We're broadcasting today from Tampa. Tampa uh, houses stations uh, 570, 910, uh, 860, 930, 1380. We're not on uh, 1380 right now, but we do uh, are on those stations. We're on 90.3 FM. And uh, Lahuti, if you're talking to me, I couldn't hear you. Um, uh, and also we have stations in Jacksonville, WBOB. Uh, out of Jacksonville and 101 point FM out of Jacksonville. You know, no matter where you're listening, though, you could be listening on your radio, you could be listening on your cell phone, you could be listening on your computer, anywhere. And no matter where you're listening, you have a toll-free number, which is 877-943-9673. Actually, you could be listening anywhere in the world and still call us with your legal question. I'm a practicing attorney in Florida, only licensed in Florida. I have a few other attorneys in my firm that are licensed in uh, Georgia, uh, Michigan, and Illinois. So we have other attorneys licensed in those states, but I'm a Florida attorney, licensed only in Florida. And if you have a legal question, your answer would be related to Florida law. It might apply to your state, but if you're from a different state, it might not. Okay, let's go to uh, Mary calling. Good morning, Joe Pippen. Okay. It's wonderful of you. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Zephyr Hills. Zephyr Hills, okay. Uh, my question is, what and and why do we have to pay a pass on tax? I live in a community, uh, and I pay like fifty dollars a month pass on tax. So you're saying you live in a community that charges you for the tax they have to pay? I guess. So you pay you pay this money directly to the community? Um, it's yeah, an association it's expense. My bill. Uh, right. Well, did, that was part of the, you belong to association, so you've got to probably pay uh, the cost of the community property. So, I, I so don't know. It, yeah, so I'm I'm guessing. I mean, you might not have enough information to give me to, for me to give you an accurate answer, but I'm guessing there's uh, uh, there's community property in your association that's taxed, and you just have to pay your your percentage share of it. It's like like you live in a condo, and there are maintenance fees and things like that. It's kind of, kind of along the same lines, and you pay uh, part of the taxes of that. 
Oh, and there's no way that you don't you can get out of paying that. If they're billing you, I'm assuming for your question that that's a legit charge, and they could probably put a lien on your property if you didn't pay it. I see. You could ask them to show you whatever that you've signed that's a part of the community that makes you obligated to pay and, and ask but, for something uh, in writing for your folder to, of why you're having to pay this. They say that I signed something when I first moved. Well, ask them for a copy of it. Okay. A asking for a copy of it. Tell them your attorney wants to see what you signed that obligates you to pay the tax, and you would like a copy of it. You don't have it in your records. Okay. That, that sounds good. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Joe. All right. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. All right. You're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. If you have a legal question, you have a toll-free number, which is 877 943 9673. That's 877 943 9673. Phone lines are open. Uh, in Lahudi, can you increase the size of the font of the caller and the location on the call screen? Okay. All right. If I can help you in any way, all you have to do is to uh, dial eight, their number 877 943 9673. 877 943 9673. Hey, do you have family members? Uh, maybe you're estranged from family members and you're wondering how to omit them from your estate plan. First of all, you're not obligated. I know this could probably be a sad topic during Christmas, but I see it come up in my practice and I see people doing estate plan and, and they uh, I always tell them there's not, this is not the end, this is not the last chapter. And if you have, um, if you have some family circumstances and you're wondering whether to include someone in the estate plan or not include them, um, all you have to do is to omit them in your will. I've done documents this week. I've omitted so and so from. Uh, why do you do that? Why do you put language in there like that? Well, you don't give a reason. Why? Because reasons can be contested. Somebody could say, well, that reason's not true, so uh, therefore I shouldn't be omitted. So you put language in documents that just say I've omitted them for personal reasons. And that shows that you remembered them and didn't want to leave them anything. And uh, so that's a very easy thing to do in documents. Can that be changed later? Yes, that can be changed. You can always uh, add somebody back in, and hopefully you would, maybe. Uh, but if you want to omit them, they're not the only person really entitled to some part of your state is your spouse and your spouse has spousal rights unless you have a pre or post marital agreement hey if you have a legal question it's 877-943-9673 877-943-9673 phone lines are open we're here to take as many calls as we possibly can all you have to do is to call i had a question yesterday from a client that came in and said if I have a will, which he did, if I have a will, why does it have to go through probate? I thought when I did this planning, when I did this will, that I was avoiding probate. I mean, I've nominated someone to be the personal representative. Some states call that executor, Florida's personal representative. I only have one child. I've made him my personal representative. I've left him everything. Why does it have to go through probate? I don't understand. Why would you tell me that a trust would avoid probate and my will has to go through probate? What what's the difference in these two documents? Well, when you die with a will, you die with assets just in your name. So now you have assets in a deceased person's name. If you have a trust, you have uh, a document called a living trust. You create it while you're living, and when you die, it's still living. So the assets are not in the deceased person's name. So the reason why uh, wills go through probate, you die with your home, you die with your checking, savings, money market, CD, stocks, bonds, you die with them, and they're still in your name. And no one has authority to deal with those but you, but you're deceased. So your will gets filed, the personal representative has to be appointed by the court, you nominated them, but now they have to be legally appointed by the court, and the court 
issues letters of administration for you to be able to go into the bank for example and say look my parent died or this person died i'm the personal representative i've been appointed by the court as the personal representative to handle his estate here is my driver's license here's the court appointment and then the court will the bank would then get you in line uh to be able to write checks on that account or take over that account if you die with a trust, the trust is still living, you've been named as the, the successor trustee, so the successor trustee can just go in with the copy of the trust, your death certificate, their ID, and the bank will uh, very quickly make them the trustee. Now they have total control over the account. So how you avoid probate is totally a function of how documents and accounts are titled. I have people all the time, and they come in, and someone's died. So the question is, uh, I said, well, I guess you're here to see what the next step is and how you proceed with your duties as the successor trustee or personal representative. And they say yes. And I say that's all uh, totally dependent upon what's in, what assets are in the estate and how they're titled. So if they're titled in the trust, here's a list of what you do. If they're not titled... Uh, in the trust, then here's what we have to do for you to get you be able to have possession of these accounts. And uh, what happens when you die depends totally upon your documents and how they're titled and what assets that you have. All right, let's go to uh, Doug in Tampa. Hi, sir. Um, I, I'm a very recent resident here in Tampa. Um, just wondering, why does the Department of Agriculture basically run everything in the state? Well, I don't think they run everything in the state. What what what, what are you worried about that they're running? Well, it's I mean, like uh, you know, if I want a business license or like uh, it, or like if uh, if I want a security guard license, I got to go through them. I just boggles my mind. I don't, I don't understand how that falls under agriculture. Think things like that that don't uh, seem to obviously fall under agriculture like, uh, it, you know, uh, well, The Secretary of State uh, controls a lot of the occupational licenses and, and entities that you could form. Uh, there's a whole department of, you know, when you incorporate, you go, you follow, that's not through the Department of Agriculture. Oh, okay, uh, well, it's, so, it, it seems like a lot of the stuff is on their website, and I, I gotta go uh, you, you know, know the state of them. Florida has a. You could go on the state of Florida. They have a great website, uh, and they have all the th departments that are listed in the state of Florida and all of their functions. Uh, I think it's just uh, Florida dot org. Oh, okay. A lot of it I noticed was just on the, like fresh from Florida or something. Like that. Yeah, we'll go to yeah. the official state of Florida website. All right, I'll check it out. Yeah, you'll see all of the departments and agencies and, and so forth and functions. Uh, there's a way, if you're a, a business, that you can pay certain taxes online, state income taxes, or not state income taxes, uh, state wage taxes and so forth, unemployment taxes. Uh, the Florida, Florida has a great website. So all right, I'll check You can check it out. all the agencies. All right. All right, thanks. All right, you have a legal question. You can call our toll-free number, 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open. And if you have something I can help you with, it doesn't even have to be a legal question. It can be just a legal, uh, it could be just a problem you have. All right, so Lahuti, what can we do for you? Yes. Um, my, as I mentioned before, my stepdad is a lawyer in New York, and my my in-laws here need to do a whole bunch of uh, wills and trusts and all that stuff. Now, mm -hmm. if what would be, can my dad help them do that from New Jersey, New York, and be stable here in Florida? Well, uh, technically, I think a Florida attorney should do their documents. Okay. Now, a family member can do documents for another family member. And, f for example, since we know one another, so forth, he, uh, I could he could prepare them and I could review them and put my stamp of approval on it. That would work okay in Florida. 
So there's some things like that that can be done. Okay. But it really should be a Florida attorney doing the documents of review. Okay, cool. Because you have to say that uh, it would be regulated by the laws in the state of Florida. It's governed by the laws in Florida. So gotcha. So an out-of-state attorney is not going to know what's all the laws in Florida that would apply to what they're doing. Now, the other, the other, the other last question I have is one of the things that he owns the most is he owns an auto body shop. Mm-hmm. Now, if you were to put that um, in his trust of, uh, will, and he's the only one that owns it, does somebody else have to have part ownership so that he doesn't lose it if he passes away? No, it can be passed on in a will or a trust to someone else. So, All right. And if it's a corporation, of course, you just assign. If you're doing a trust and it's a corporation, then you assign the corporate shares to the trust to avoid probate. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law, if you have a legal question, you have a toll-free number, which is 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. I'm Attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. And if you have a legal question, hey, I'd be more than glad to help you. Why, why not get a little peace of mind and what your circumstances are? It might be a simple answer give you uh, some peace of mind so you don't have to worry about it during the holidays, so I'd be glad to try to do that. All right, let's go to uh, Renee. Hey, Joe. Hey, Renee. Um, mom, love your show, by well, the way. Thank you. And, and Merry Christmas. Where are you calling um, from? Lakewood Ranch. Lakewood Ranch, okay. Well, my mom passed away in May this year, and I'm the trustee of her trust as well as the executor of her will, and uh, my younger sister had accused me of taking financial advantage of my mother. I was interrogated by the bank, by the fraud department, was exonerated. Of course, I had never done that. And then I found out that after they, that she had moved a large chunk of mom's money out of the trust and into an individual account payable on death to her. But thank God before mom passed, we were able to move everything back into the trust. Mm-hmm. So because that happened, I'm just giving you the history. I'm about to send out the distribution uh, probably in March, and I'm just wondering if it'd be wise to have her sign some kind of a release before sending her the check, and if so, is that something your office can help me with? Yes, here's what we normally do in your situation. In fact, it doesn't have to be exactly your situation. It could be all the, all the trust administrations that we do. At the uh, Toward the end in March, in your case, we would send everyone an accounting of all of the assets, we would show them how we calculated their share, what they're going to receive. We send them a copy of their final distribution check. We don't send them the check. We send them a copy. We ask for their approval uh, and acceptance of uh, the inventory and the accounting and the amount of the check. Get them to sign a re- an acceptance and release of a uh, trustee for you and release you from further duties as a trustee. When all of the beneficiaries have signed those things, acceptance and release, then we, re- then we release the checks. The reason why we do that, sometimes there's one person who's n- not going to sign and is going to may- maybe force an adjustment of everything, but then everybody else already has their checks. So we want everybody in agreement and er- everybody to release you and accept their amount before we, we we release any checks. And yes, we can help you with that. Awesome. Can I, I know I've spoken with Dennis Moses in your Lakewood Ranch office before. Is that something I would contact him about? Yes. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. And, it, yeah, and, yeah. and we can we can uh, help you. Dennis can help you. Our staff can support Dennis to get all that done. Beautiful. Thank you so much. All right. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Merry Christmas. You are listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. We're about halfway through the show. So if you have a question, now is a good time to call in. And don't wait to the very end. Sometimes phones get all jammed. I don't know why people all wait to the end, and there are people hanging on there that couldn't get their question answered. So we're about halfway through the show. You have a toll-free number, which is 877-943-9673. You're listening to a live show just a few days before Christmas. 877-943-9673. And phone lines are open. And if you have something going on uh, with you that's worrying you, maybe you didn't lost a little sleep last night, wake up in the middle of the night worried about it, and all you have to do is to call. Maybe I can get you pointed in the right direction and give you a little assistance. So how do you choose who would be the person in charge of your state? And by the way, this is a good reason to update documents now and then. 
Uh, one of my clients came in yesterday, and they wanted to change everything up. They wanted to change the trustees. They had a change in distribution. They had uh, lots of little things they wanted. They've been thinking about that bothered them. They wanted to tweak those. It's very easy to change wills and trust. You just do a codicil to the will or an amendment to the trust. It's not a big deal at all. If you want to change the guardians, you want to change trustees, you want to change the personal representative, you want to change the amounts of distribution, maybe somebody died and you want to reallocate one of the distributions. And Lahuti's our producer, and he has another question. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, so I had, uh, uh, right before Thanksgiving, I had an uncle pass away in New York City. Now, this is a question, what, how could we solve this? It's up in New York, but how would, they, how would it be solved if it were to happen to anybody else? He passed away. He, had the, he owned a bowling alley, and when he passed away, he never had anybody else um, under him at the bowling alley. Now they can't sign checks. They can't do anything. How could they go? What do they need to do to try and fix that? Or how can anybody do that if that were to happen to them? Well, the personal representative, did he have a will? Um, not sure. Okay, so well, I'll answer it both ways. If he had a will, the personal representative named in the will would have to petition the court to be put in charge of the estate, and then he would, after his appointment, would could uh, be in charge of the financial accounts to pay bills and take over the business. Uh, if he didn't have a will, then the state of New York, I'm sure, has a statutory scheme of how the estate would be distributed. So in Florida, the spouse has certain rights, and if he didn't have a will, uh, then there's a family line, a family tree type of descent on who would get the assets and what they'd be entitled to. If he did have a will, uh, if he didn't have a will, then he has a statutory will from the state. If he did have a will, then that would be followed, and I'm sure they're, they're going to have to go through a probate proceeding up there to take control of the accounts and so forth. Thank you so much. All Dave. right. You're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. If you have a legal question, you have a toll-free number, which is 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open. Hey, we're here to help you. We have 20-some minutes left in the show this today, and be uh, glad to help you. If I can help you in any way, all you have to do is to dial that toll-free number, 877-943-9673. So if you don't have a will, you really have one. That's what you need to know. If you haven't signed one, then the state of Florida has made one for you. So you have a statutory will if you never signed one. And uh, maybe some family members that you didn't want to receive anything are going to get something because you failed to do documents. You know, you work your whole lifetime to accumulate an estate. You think you take uh, the short period of time that it takes to do a will or a trust to get everything in order and have it distributed the way you want to. All right, let's go to uh, John calling. Hey, John. Good morning. Where are you calling from, John? I'm calling from Jacksonville, Florida. All right. What can we do for you? Okay. I'm going to ask you a question about reverse mortgage. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, the person did a reverse mortgage in 2009. They did a reverse mortgage to me, and, and we wasn't married. And she wasn't, uh, I was told you had to be 62 years old. She wasn't 62 years old, so I didn't know anything about that. I didn't, you know, I didn't know anything about law and did some studying. And we never had uh, counseling. After you signed papers, and I, I never, I never had an attorney to counsel me and and let me know there were some days I can, uh, I can recline. But uh, you know, I, I didn't know anything about reverse mortgage. Is that legal? All right, uh, all right. You, so you have one. You applied for one, and it was received by you. N no, the uh, the, the lady, uh, uh, my ex-wife, uh, she did a reverse mortgage, and she did a reverse mortgage to me. We was friends. And she put the, she did a reverse mortgage to me, John, and uh, she wasn't sixty two years old. I think she was about fifty five. She was fifty five years old when she did that. And uh, and and they well, said you, okay. So this was through a company. N n no, uh, I, I, through, I think I think some I think some mortgage company or Citibank was involved as well. And they didn't. Uh, you know, I didn't have any counsel, and she didn't have counsel. Whether she can decline. All right, all right John. Then, John, did, who owns the property we're talking about? She does. At, at the time, she did. Yes. You know, at the time that she got this mortgage, she was not sixty-two. No, no. And who, 
This is your ex-wife? Right. Uh, she did a first mortgage to me, John. Well, no, I don't know. She gave it to you. I don't understand that statement. She couldn't. She would have a reverse mortgage on her property, which would benefit herself, not you. Right, but she put it in my name. She, she, did a, she, she, she put a reverse right. mortgage in, in my name. And, you know, I didn't, did I didn't you sign it. papers? I, I signed some papers, Mr. Pittman, but, but at that time, I didn't know anything Did she about make that. you an owner of the property? Make me a what? Did she make you the owner of the property? Yes, uh uh-huh. Oh, she did a deed of the property to you, and then you got a reverse mortgage. No, she did a reverse mortgage. Yeah. But I didn't know anything about it. I, but. I don't, she can't do it if she gave you the property. John, I think somebody would have to sit down with you and review your papers to answer your questions. I don't think I'm going to be able to help you on the air here in the few minutes we have. Right. Okay, the office in Jacksonville. You have office here Yeah, in I can, uh, you could call the office and get on my calendar in Jacksonville, yes. Okay, Mr. Pippen, I appreciate you. Do you have a number? What is it then? Just call our toll free number one eight hundred. Okay. Two two six. Okay. Three five two nine. Okay, thanks, Doctor. And then okay. I can probably talk to you on the phone, and maybe you can I can get you to send me some copies of some papers that I can review uh, before the appointment. Okay, that'd be great. Okay, you're right. you're, in, you're in your family and friends and your, and your clients. Everybody have a blessed holiday. And, well, thank you for calling, John. Okay, bye. Right, thank you. All right, so reverse mortgages are an interesting. We had a case this week where a gentleman died, gave his wife a life estate in the property, and she was trustee of his trust. And come to find out that there was a reverse, she was able to get a reverse mortgage somehow, not being the owner of the property, being the trustee of a trust, but she obtained a trustee, a reverse mortgage on property, and then she as trustee took the money for herself after the person who created the trust and owned the home died. She was a trustee and she had a life estate, so she wasn't an owner. And uh, so we're looking into how all that happened. It could be could be improper taking of the money. Who knows? But to get a reverse mortgage, you have to... Uh, I've always maintained that you have to be the owner of the property in over 62. And a successor trustee of a trust is not an owner, and they have to follow the instructions in the trust... And and so that uh, pr- probably wasn't done done properly, but you know we're looking into it. Could be it could be some little something I don't know about the situation before I make a final decision. Hey, it's uh, you have about twenty minutes left in the show. If you have a question, you have a toll free number, which is eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three eight seven seven nine four three. 9673. Phone lines are open, and we are here to help as many people as we possibly can in the remaining moments here. And why not get a little peace of mind? And hey, your question helps other people. Other people I have all the time. I was People tell me, I was listening to your show. I love your show. I was listening to your show. And somebody called in and asked this question, and uh, you know, I hadn't really thought about it before, but the same thing could happen to me. And I heard your answer, and I took some corrective uh, measures, and thank you so much for helping me indirectly. They didn't even call the show. But if you have some uh, some problem or legal concern that you want to discuss, you have a toll-free number, which is 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open, and we're here to help, again, as many people as we possibly can. So I had a call yesterday. A person wanted to know they'd given someone a power of attorney, and they wanted to know how they could. They didn't want this person to have the power of attorney anymore, and they wanted to know how it could be revoked. So I asked a few questions. Here are the questions I asked them. I said, do you have possession of the document? And they did. And I said, does the person that you have given the power of attorney to have possession of any copies of the document? And they said, no. I said, well, that power of attorney can be revoked by you just by tearing up the document, tearing up the copy. So the, the original doesn't exist anymore after you tear it up. The copy doesn't exist anymore after you tear it up. And the person has no power unless they have possession of these documents. So you just destroy the documents. Now, I'm talking about power of attorneys. I'm not talking about wills and trusts. I'm talking about just power of attorneys in this question. They can just be torn up. Revocation of the document can be done by destroying the document. 
So suppose the question had been, well, so yes, I did give them the original. I'm going to say, well, do you, can you get it back? Because you can destroy it by tearing it up. Do you trust the person to get it back and uh, not, not have made a copy or be honest with you if they made a copy? Oh, yes, I trust the person very much. I just want someone else to be my power of attorney. So revocation of the power of attorneys can be, uh, can be done by destroying the document. And we have Lahuti. If somebody didn't want to talk to me, but they asked you to ask me a question. I can't hear you now. If you could give your 1-800 number one more time, a little bit slower, so someone could catch it, that's what they were trying to get. All right, good. Uh, so my 800 number, we have offices all over the state of Florida. If you need to call me for a phone consult or uh, f- uh, even a free office visit to look at some papers, our toll-free number is one 800 226-3529. That's 1-800-226-3529. If you'd like our free estate planning poster sheet, you can uh, call that number and go to extension 200, 1-800-226-3529. We'd be glad to get that out to you. All right, let's go to Larry calling. Yes, I got a question. Larry, where are you calling from? From Winter Haven. Winter Haven. Are you listening on 90.3 or 910? Uh, I don't know. On the radio station? That's okay. Oh, the one in Haines City. Yeah, 90.3. Okay, very good. Yes, uh, my question is if uh, you've been married for 11 years and you bought a house with your wife of money that you inherited and now you're going to go through a divorce because you mixed money will she have a right to one half you bought the house in both names yes yes yeah she would have some spousal rights to that because you now own it jointly okay if you keep an inheritance totally separate uh then it's not a marital asset but it's a little bit different with Homestead because they have spousal rights to the Homestead that would have had to have been waived uh, with a either, in your case, probably a post-marital agreement. Okay. And uh, to take and dig up my accounts and show that I paid for the house. It's probably not going to make a lot of difference since you commingled it jointly and it was Homestead. Okay. And and an or doesn't make any difference on... The way no, well, real estate is always, it's and, no matter what the, unless it's a mobile home. No, it's not, so. Yeah, so real estate is and. You can't really have an or situation with real estate. Okay. Well, I thank you so much. All right, sorry, Larry. You bet. All right. Bye. You have a legal question, you have a toll-free number, 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Hey, we're on uh, Facebook Live right now. We're also on WeBeam TV. That's streaming live. So there's some video ways you can uh, watch the show in the last few minutes. And if you go, uh, if you become a member of Ask an Attorney, you can go on Facebook and go to Ask an Attorney. And there are uh, a couple of those. One of them, uh, we have almost 10,000 members of uh, Ask an Attorney, and you'll see how many members we have, and that'll be the one. There's one little smaller group with just a couple of hundred. But Ask an Attorney is uh, on live Facebook, Facebook Live, and it will be uh, on that page a little bit later today in the full, if you want to go back. Or if you miss something, you'll see it again. It'll be there. It's also on WeBeam TV. And that's streaming live, and there's a, a list of previous shows, too, on WeBeam TV. We also have our own YouTube uh, channel, Ask an Attorney, all about floor law. If you want to catch up on some of the older shows or see uh, see what the show looks like on video as opposed to just listening on the radio, there you have ways to do that as well. Okay, so let's go to Kelly calling. Kelly, what can we do? For, where are you calling from? Uh, yes, sir. Good morning. I'm calling from Tampa. Okay. I have a mother that's uh, getting on in age, and uh, she's had some dialysis done recently, um, a stage three. Her house is paid for, 
And I'm concerned about protecting her house in case she had to go into our nursing home um, under either the Medicaid or Medicare. Well, the good news for you, and I'm sure this will give you great peace of mind, is the homestead is exempt from uh, Medicaid uh, claims and liens. Okay. So if she went into a home, if she went into a nursing home, she could, uh, you could maintain the home, and when one day when she passed away, you, that could be left to her children. Do she have other? You have other? You have siblings? I do. I have one. Okay, so if her will says equally to my two children, when she dies, and even though she was in a nursing home, that home can do, pass on to the two of you, free from any claims of Medicaid, as an exempt asset. It also doesn't count against her that she owns a home in the calculation of when she can get Medicaid. And I would suggest, does she have a power of attorney to, to you? Um, she does not. Is she still competent to sign one? Yes. I would. We have a full-time Medicaid attorney, and it's so important to have a, a valid power of attorney giving you the power to do some other things, to move assets around, to protect them, and to qualify for Medicaid benefits. Yeah, that would be uh, fantastic. Now, the house is out of Gainesville is where she lives uh -huh. currently. Well, I go through Gainesville all the time on my way to. We have an office in Ocala in Jacksonville, and I travel... Uh, through Gainesville all the time. So if you want us to do it, I'd be glad. Uh, we could figure out a way to do that for you. That'd uh, be great. And I'll just call the one eight hundred. Yeah, number. that'd be fine. Sure. Okay. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. All right bye Going now. through uh, Gainesville this coming Wednesday, matter of fact. All right. So if you have a legal question, let me give the numbers again. You have a toll-free number, 877-943-943. 9673 phone lines are open. We have about seven or eight minutes left in the show. And let's go to John. John, where are you calling from? Seminole. Seminole. What can we do for you? Okay, thanks for taking my call. My Bill. pleasure. Uh, uh, with the will, does uh, every will have to go through probate? Every will has to go through probate if there is an asset in just the deceased person's name. So you okay. could, for example, own a home with your wife, and that would be in joint names, and you have a will that left it to her, but she's going to get it anyway because it's jointly held between the two of you, so that if the only asset was that home, that will would not have to go through probate, although it would have to be filed with the court. Oh, if you, okay. So um, just because you have a will doesn't necessarily mean probate. If you want Husband and wife own everything jointly, yes. and they have wills that leave everything to one another. Well, they own everything jointly with right of survivorship, so the will doesn't have to be probated when the first one dies. Okay. Now, a lot of people hear that, though, and they say, well, why don't we just wait till the first one dies before we do our estate planning? The problem is you both could die at the same time, which would result in probate. One of you could become incapacitated, uh, and then the other one dies during that period. So it's really good for both of you to do estate planning to avoid probate and guardianship and plan for to avoid the probate upon the second death if you owned everything jointly, which you can do that with a trust, basically. Right. Now let me ask you a question. If uh, both of you were married before you had children, can you make out a will that, um, you know, if the one person dies, you want to leave everything to the spouse? Mm -hmm. the surviving spouse, but when the other person dies, uh, you want everything split between the uh, the children. Can you make one will out, or do you have to uh, wait till the person dies and make another will out? Well, if you're just doing wills, you each can have separate wills that control, I'll leave everything to my spouse, and then if she's not living, then you could leave it to your children, and she could have a will that left everything to you, but if you weren't living to her children. I mean, you can do a will like that. You could do a joint living trust that leaves uh, everything 50-50 to the two sets of children. Right. So you could do a joint trust and just make an agreement that we want everything divided equally to our children of our previous marriage, and we want to do it 50-50, and then you would basically trust one another not to change it upon the first death. 
Okay, so but of course there is no way where even if you did individual wills, uh, when that, of course when the other person dies, you could change your will at any time. You could, and you could okay. change a tr- you could change a joint trust upon the first death t- also. Okay, so the, there is no concrete way where two people who are alive can make a will out and uh, have the. Uh, well, you could have a will that leaves, uh, a, say, your your wife's statutory share is thirty percent. Right. So now I'm not talking about the homestead, homestead now. I'm talking about other assets. So you could have a will that left. Uh, 30% to your spouse and 70% to your children. And that could apply on anything that you had just in your name, not jointly he- held. Right. And, and that wouldn't apply against the homestead because the spouse has a homestead rights. Y'all could sign, uh, you both are worried about it, so you could sign a post-marital agreement that right. y'all could contractually agree to exactly what you would like to happen to the assets. Uh, so there are ways to get around, I think, what you want to do. But you both have to be in agreement, and you both have to sign some papers. Right, exactly. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Joe. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Okay, let's go to Sue. Sue, where are you calling from? Um, Sarasota. Sarasota. What can we do for you? I have a question about a – I heard you talk about power of attorney – limited power of attorney mm-hmm. um my uh parents passed away mm-hmm. they their wills and everything did not go through probate because they didn't have a house or anything they rented but they did own a timeshare and now i'm getting information from an attorney uh regarding um signing off a limited power of attorney so i really don't know what that is uh, both of your parents living? No, they're both those deceased. Well, okay, so I'm at, that's what I thought. So uh, power of attorney is a void upon death. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why you would be... who who. Would... Well, they're asking me to do a limited power of attorney since I was in charge of their estate. All right, a limited power of attorney to who? To me. Well, no, you would sign a limited power of attorney giving who the power to do something for you. Okay. Uh, is a time-sharing considered uh, like a piece of property the, in an estate? Yes. Okay. So the law firm wants you to give them the power of attorney, a limited power of attorney, to do something concerning the timeshare? I just don't... I can't, Correct. Correct. Oh, okay. I Correct. got you. Uh, and you want to know if that's okay? Yeah. And you've, you've hired them to do what with the timeshare? To get it out of the, your parents' names? Yeah, a while back, but then it kind of fizzled out, and now they have another attorney handling it. And my dad's attorney said that my father didn't, you know, he didn't have houses or anything, that his estate didn't have to go to probate. Yeah, but if there's a timeshare in his name, then there'd be a probate of the timeshare. Okay. So maybe you give him a power of attorney and he has a way to get you out of the timeshare obligation or to get it out of your father's name. So okay. if you've hired him to do that, I don't see anything wrong with signing something to give him the power to, to get it done for you. Hmm. Okay, well, it's a timeshare company who sent it to someone else. Um, okay. Well, if your dad had no assets and you don't want the timeshare and you don't want to go through Correct. probate, you're not obligated Correct. to do anything, I wouldn't think. Okay. But if you're represented by an attorney, you need to ask him that, because I can't really okay. advise you if you're represented by someone else. So, Okay. All right. Thank you Thanks. So much. All right. Bye-bye. All right. You've been listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. If you'd like to contact our office, we have a toll-free number, 1-800-226-3529. That's 1-800-226-3529. If you'd like to get our free estate planning poster sheet, you can... Uh, Call that number, or you can send me an email at joe, J-O-E, at A-T-T-Y, P-I-P dot com. That's joe, J-O-E, at A-T-T-Y, P-I-P dot com. If you'd like to text me, you have a toll-free number, 727-667-3967. This is Attorney Joe Pippen. You have a great, great Christmas. So long. Be safe out there. <laughs> 